Okay, shalom. Wonderful lesson ahead. Unlocking the number code, the two-way mirror. Okay, so let's take the red pill and see beyond, see through the numbers. So in this lesson, let's have a look at the overall lesson objectives. Come, let's reason together. So as we've shown in many lessons, this phrase is highly messianic and contains loads of hidden codes and messages and wisdom for us. Um, that we just need to reveal. Come now, let us debate, says your day while we. If your sins prove to be like crimson, they will become white as snow. If they prove, be, prove to be as red as crimson dye, they will. They shall become as wool. So that's Isaiah one eighteen. It's got an ordinal of six hundred and forty nine, and it's linked to this massive concept regarding Mashiach ben Yosef, which is the concept of the coat of many colours. Okay, it's got a regular and ordinal that add to 1184, which is exactly the same as Mashiach, the regular, the ordinal, and the square ordinal add up to 1184. So we've got a link between this and the concept of Mashiach. However, the square ordinal of Ketaneth Pasim comes to 2068. The square ordinal Misbah Gadol, taking into account the Sophit letters, comes to 2475. Add them both together, 4543, which is 7649. And there we have our connection. Let's look at what we're going to be going through in this lesson. First of all, behold thy mother. Why is this statement a contradiction that denies the truth by asserting the opposite? How can we transform this contradiction and denial of the truth into a revelation? Is the literal interpretation of the Torah defective? Does it reveal the perfection and oneness of your dear wow here? How is the bread from heaven connected to the serpent on the cross, Yeshua and the inner interpretation of the Torah? What is the connection between the literal interpretation of the Torah represented by Miriam? slash Mary and the inner secret meaning of the Torah represented by Yeshua. In what ways are Moshe, Yeshua and David connected to the five aspects of the era of Rav that constitute the unholy serpent? Three books slash testimonies are the basis of creation representing the five dimensions of 3D space time of the fifth dimension of spirituality. What has the three aspects of the giant serpent got to do with the matrix upon which your creation hangs? Okay, just to clarify the matrix. Um, in the film, there is um, a, like a fake reality and a real reality. In the true creation, it's all true reality. Because there's only yod heh wah who's the ultimate existence. And he chooses to be with us, in even in our very restricted um, states of consciousness and unawareness and immaturity. He still chooses to be with us and dwell with us in that, be near us in that. So he, who is the ultimate existence, validates even our lower levels of consciousness. Okay, so in terms of matrix, the matrix is just um, the structure that's in place or the, the phenomena that's in place that... Um, the, the phenomena in, in, in place that separates between the hidden and the revealed. I think that's the easiest way to put it. But both of those, hidden and revealed, are both real realities because both of them ultimately re are, are there for the purpose of revealing the name Yote Wawe and revealing not only his name but his, um, his authority and his sovereignty and his oneness. So everything's got purpose and everything's part of that ultimate glorious reality. Okay, next lesson. Um, if you're interested in what we're going to, some of these things, we won't get through all those points in this lesson because it's a phenomenally vast subject. We've got every single part of it is glorious and wonderful. And it's about revealing that um awesome reality and drawing close to closer to it or becoming more aware of it next lesson however and subscribe if any of these things um you're interested in, in seeing um seeing beyond the matrix if you like and awakening high levels of consciousness within us drawing close to the name yote wow okay and that ultimate super reality seeing beyond the serpent matrix how is entropy eliminated in order to collapse the wave function of judgment and duality how does this reveal the underlying oneness and singularity did miriam mary beholding her son attain the healing for all humanity that we were expecting it to attain have we realistically got time to attain this expected healing in the time frame before his expected return so bearing in mind i've pointed out in the last previous lessons mary's code name for the entire female feminine divine so the entire feminine divine aspect of reality 
the spirit of truth, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, okay, the entire of humanity to a certain degree, okay, so um, did, did this attain healing? And if not, why not? Okay, if Miriam was not healed at the cross as we expected, what actually happened? What did it actually accomplish? Was this the hidden will of Yod Hei Wawe as foreknown and expected by the sages? Okay, so she achieved healing 100%, but it wasn't in the way that we thought it would be. Okay, and you can do some deep dives down into the numbers to reveal exactly what did go on. Okay, what was accomplished, and you know, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. I should really say, knowledge is empowerment. Knowledge causes to us ascend and um, get more um, online with that true reality that I've spoken about. How are the three types of Lashon Hara evil tongue related to the three main aspects of Mashiach and Tifereth, Yod, Yesod, and Malkuth? How might the laws of leprosy give us some indication to our current state of purity and cleanliness? Okay, let's go and have a look at this lesson then. Behold thy mother. Then saith he to the disciples, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciples took her in, and the disciple took her into his own home. That's from John 19, 27. Let's have a look at some of these incredible numbers. Behold thy mother. Comes to 675, 81 ordinarily. 756 together, Miss Pagadol of 1115, 93 ordinarily, and 1248. Let's have a look at some of these numbers then. Straight away, we've got massive significance, messianic significance, because Mashiach ben Dawid, Messiah son of David, has got a Miss Pagadol ordinarily of 93. Also, Melech HaMashiach, King Messiah, has got an ordinarily of 93. Straight away, we know this is talking about something very significant. Let's go and have a look at some of the other numbers. We've got this and this is where we're going to have a look because there's a very, very wonderful hidden teaching in this that we need to be really aware of because if we're not we're not aware of some of the underlying rules and relationship between the hidden and the uh, revealed and the, um, uh, you know, the um, ascent and descent and things like that truth and falsehood if we don't have an understanding of that relationship we're going to be befuddled by everything and when we be befuddled we can't see the wood for the trees so we need some clarity okay so we've got this this here behold thy mother has got the same gematria regular gematria as contradictions tira Okay, we're going to be having a deep dive into this in a moment, but let's just work through these. 72 is the ordinal of it. Together they come to 747. Very, very significant number, as we will see. Contradict means to deny the truth by asserting the opposite. 72 is 4 times 288, the lost sparks of holiness. Okay, that must be gathered in during this exam. Okay, so... Okay, just change that slightly. This part of this word here is hidden in this word here, astira, which means to hide. He said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end will be, for they are a generation of changes. They are not recognisable as my children whom I have re reared. That's Deuteronomy 32, 20. Okay, so we can see exactly the same letters, satira, Satira, and then it's got an Aleph in front of it, which is highly significant in and of itself. Okay, let's just go and have a look at some of these other numbers because when we go and have a look here, we're going to do a deep dive into this contradiction and look at some underlying, um, un underlying lesson teachings from Baal Shem Tov and other sources and things like that. It'll just and once we've looked at the other things associated with this phrase, Behold thy mother, it will tie in much, much better. Um, so sword, spelt out, the first filling, when the vav is filled with a yod, comes to 576, regular 99, ordinarily they come to 675. So sod is the secret level of interpreting the Torah. The secret hidden meaning within the Torah. Okay, and we talked about this in the lesson that we did about Moshe hidden in the belly of the snake and also last lesson when we mentioned about um, the Pishon River 
and things like that and that symbolizing um, the final letter H which symbolizes Mary the mother okay and the the holy Shekinah the word of truth um, and also the concept of the kingdom of which David will the final um, revelation of the Mashiach Mashiach and David will help establish that kingdom okay so we're going to have a look that the secret meaning is very much attached to the Peshat meaning, which is represented by the final letter He of the name Yod He Wow He, okay, which is represented by Miriam. So you've got Yeshua on the cross that represents the inner secret meaning of the Torah and Mary that represents the final letter He, but the letter He, which represents the literal interpretation of the Torah, is not complete without the inner secret meaning of the Torah so that's the dynamic that you've got where you've got Yeshua on the cross saying woman behold thy son and then to the disciples behold their mo thy mother okay after she has fully comprehended the secret e inner meaning of Yeshua Mashiach ben Yosef being lifted up just as the serpent was lifted up by Moshe in the wilderness and everything that that is actually indicating, all the secret codes regarding that dynamic. Okay, so we've got to really start to deep dive into this. So the, sec the fact is that this is connected to the secret meaning of the Torah is for that reason that I've just stated. Moshe, the man of God, 747. This is one of the appellations of Moshiach who is Moshe, the first redeemer was Moshe, the man of God, 747, it's up here a contradiction, why is it a contradiction, because Moshiach often appears in exile as a serpent, it's a complete contradiction in itself, it contradict means to deny the truth, so the Moshiach often appears in its opposite form, so it contradicts the truth. That's why we've got to do a lot of unravelling and, and a lot of um, analysis to try and reveal the truth. It's not obvious. It's got a, a regular of 117, which is exactly the same as the angel of yod -Heh -Wah. It's also a filling out of Yeshua, as we will see. It's a filling out of Yeshua. So yod shin vav Ayin. Yeshua has its spelt out each letter as it sounds goes 117 exactly the same we've got a connection between the regular and ordinal of yeshua 639 and the tree of knowledge 639 we've also got a connection for this 81 up to here behold thy mother and that comes to Moshe filled out so that's the ordinal of Moshe. so we've got a connection here between um uh, we've got a connection between Moshe and we've also got a connection through this to um, Yeshua okay, and the tree of knowledge, sorry the tree of knowledge is Yeshua and Moshe added together they're what overcomes the unity between Moshe and uh, Yeshua overcomes the power of the tree of knowledge Okay, the tree of knowledge though, however, adds up to 720 so that's linked up to this 72 as well. The highest filling out of the name yod heh wow -He. And it's also the truth. The truth comes to 679 plus 41. Okay. And that is the square ordinal. 679 is the square ordinal of ha -Emeth And also the, reg the normal ordinal of ha -Emeth. And that 41 is the ordinal also of Kise Dawid, the throne of David. And according to Vilna Gowen, the throne of David is Moshech ben Yosef. And I've talked about that many times and what that's the significance of that. Okay, 747 again. Yeshua had not three. Comes to 747. Okay. Moshe ben Amran. Moshe son of Amran. Who is the man of God. Moshe the man of God. Also comes to 747. Okay, this contradiction up here. Why? And look at that. Is the ordinal is exactly the same as Yeshua. It's the both of Mashiach. There's only one Mashiach. One soul of Mashiach. He came first as Moshe and then I came again as Yeshua. So elevated up to a much higher level of Mashiach. The soul of Mashiach. A revelation of Mashiach at a much higher level. 
And then we've also got here 747. If we add a kalel, which means an alif, for each of the words, Yeshua Hanotsri, it comes to 749, which is exactly the same as Yeshua HaMashiach. So there's all kinds of incredible connections. And he said, for there is a hand on the throne of the Eternal, that there shall be a war for the Lord. And then it would be from generation to generation. But this has, this part of it, 675. So it's connected to this. A war of the Lord. It's against Amalek. Doubt. Okay. So if we don't have the truth, we've usually got doubt there instead. Or falsehood. Doubt or falsehood. Doubt, well, which is the truth? What is the truth or simply falsehood? People believe in something that is false that is not the truth. And it obscuring that true reality that we're seeking. True elevated levels of consciousness. More awareness of absolute reality. And the truth shall set you free. Okay? So... Um, where have we got this from? The Mispah Gadol is 249 of the truth shall set you free. This is the Mispah Gadol ordinal. And 249 times 3 is 747. So we've got that connection from and the truth shall set you free. The truth regarding the concept of Mashiach and the truth regarding Moshe, truth regarding Yeshua and dealing with this massive contradiction <laughs> that hinders revelation. And then we've got this connection here. And the bones, this is connecting it back to the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef. So we've got all the main concepts of Mashiach here. We've got clear evidence to connect to Mashiach ben Dawid. We've got clear evidence to connect to the body of the bird. This is the right wing of the bird. This is the body of the bird. Or this is the tail of the serpent when it's re represented as a serpent. This is the head of the serpent, Moshe. And then this is the body of the serpent or this is the in 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 the terms of the um holy bird the ruach hakadesh the holy dove yeshua would be the left wing mashiach ben dawid the right wing and moshe the middle of the bird okay but anyway we've got this so this is a concept of again connected to mashiach ben yosef and the bones of yosef which the children of israel are brought up out of egypt they buried in shechem in the parcel of ground which yaakov brought from the sons bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of money, and they became the inheritance of the children of Yosef. So that's Jos from Joshua 24, 32, 1,155. Behold thy mother. Okay, so there's something extremely important regarding Yosef and this whole concept of behold thy mother. Because as you've, got, you've got to also understand that Miriam, if she's representing the, the last letter here, the um, kingdom, the um, holy Shekhinah, that's in Kabbalah, that's represented by Rachel, who's Rachel, is she's Yosef's mother. So Yosef and Rachel, we've got Yeshua and Miriam, the same dynamic. Okay. It's all wonderful. Let's go and have a look at this contradiction. I've gone over this before, this concept before, but it's very important to understand it now from an even different and um, more elevated perspective. We've got this phrase, and it's con it, this is all to do with about Yeshua hiding. Let's just go back to where we was looking. You can see where I get this satira from, contradiction. I don't get it from here, but it's very similar to how I've derived this word contradiction. As Tira, and we've says that there's the aleph and then the stira contradiction. So the aleph and the concept of contradiction are both connected together. Let's go and explore this further. So the master of the universe hides in the letter aleph, and this is where why the lesson is called the two way mirror because an aleph is a very significant letter, and it acts as a two way mirror. It's, as, it's almost like a two-way mirror. Um, it's very much... And we will see as we develop. Let's just go through this particular slide. There's loads we're going to come back and keep coming back to this concept of the Aleph to build it up. Because it's a concept. It's a massive, massive concept. And it's a massive, massive code that we need to understand very clearly. Because it's the link between the hidden realm and the visible realm. 
in so many different ways and it, it's it, in a lot of ways it represents that the structure of the matrix um, you, you know that that separates between the hidden realm and the revealed realm um, um, awareness of that super um, level of reality and the state of exile that we are now in this restricted consciousness where we're not aware of unity and oneness we're aware of separation and duality the letter Aleph is a lot to do with that because the enemy said I will pursue I will overtake and I will share the booty my desire will be filled from them and I will draw my sword my hand will impoverish them so all these first five words of because the enemy said I will pursue I will overtake and I will share my booty okay um, the first five letters all are represented by the Aleph Baal Shem Tov had something to say about that 556 or whether it's four times 139 four times Yona Hanavi and Yona is the sign that Mashiach ben Yosef gave for a wicked and adulterous generation his numbers come up all the time but Yona also means dove like as in the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the whole concept of the Holy Shekhinah, what we are trying to see thoroughly restored, you know. Right, so we've got, okay, so I've just changed around the animations. Hiding I will hide. Okay, so this is... Um, Hastir, uh, Hastir, okay, hiding high will hide, that's from Deuteronomy 31, 18, and it's very similar to that word that we've just looked at um, um, from Deuteronomy 32. It comes to 130 ordinarily, which is exactly the same as the regular of the filled out letter Ayin, and Ayin also means I, so that's how you would spell I, and that's the letter that's missing from Yeshua's name. Okay, so that's the whole concept of Mashiach ben Yosef suffering with his in exile. This is alluded to, this is what is alluded to in the words, and I will hide. So now we're going to look at commentary that's by Baal Shem Tov. This is, you should realize that I, as in Yote Huawei, am in the concealment. So this is Degel Machane Ephraim Vayelech. That's from the Baal Shem Tov. And this word here, which is part of his commentary, can be rearranged to form Esther Satira. So that's where I got that Satira contradiction from. It's from rearranging this word to Esther, and Esther means hidden, and then Satira, a hidden contradiction. Okay. Say also, verse below, Exodus, so it's talking about this verse. This is taken from um, a book that I've got, and it's just the commentary as it's written, other than this little bit that I've added on to show where we get the word contradiction from, satira. It comes from here. It comes from taking the first letter of this word, astir, and putting it to the end of this, and then taking the first letter here and putting it to the first there so we get a steer a steerer okay we're rearranging it see also verse below exodus 15:9. so Baal Shem Tov links this to this verse hiding i will hide similarly i heard from my master or from my teacher Baal Shem Tov that the words the enemy said i will pursue i will overtake i will divide the spoil all beginning with the letter aleph because alu foshel olam master of the universe is hidden there in the mystery of the name sa'el so I've gone over that name um, quite a few times in different teachings. Sa'el means, um, is reference really to yod heh wah -Wah adonai So this is, the, this is the name that shows unity between heaven and earth. Between body, uh, sorry, soul and body, body and soul. Okay, between the letter Vav, which is represented by Yeshua, and the letter He, which is represented by Mary. It comes to 91. So L comes to 91. Okay, this is one of the 72 names of God. Um, I've talked about in... I've recently done a teaching on the 72 names of God. So it's got a triangle of 13, and 13 equals Achad, 
oneness. Taldoth Yaakov Yosef Bereshith Ben Pras Yosef page. That's just giving you a reference from the commentary to which it's taken. As we can see, the Aleph can hide the truth in a lie and a contradiction. Okay, it denies the truth by asserting the opposite. So the fact is the Aleph represents Alufo Shalolam, master of the universe, but look where he's hidden it. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will take, I will share the booty. He's hidden it in evil. Okay, so he is even hidden in evil. That's basically the contradiction that we have to deal with. We've got to sort out. Um, because the enemy said I will pursue all over take all share of the booty comes to 1358 plus the ordinal value which is 215 together they come to 1578 the Miss Pagadol is 2078 plus 224 and then we've got this number here let's go and have a look at some other numbers so we've got and the bones of Yosef which the children of Israel had brought up I've just called that in better. So the mispagadol of this and the bones of Yosef, which children of Israel had brought up, comes to 3,436, exactly the same as the regular plus the mispagadol of because the enemy said, I will pursue and overtake, I will share the booty. The bones of Yosef are what's hidden. <laughs> they, this, is, this is part of the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef. This is the real... Um, this is hidden very, very deeply. And it's for us to reveal the truth regarding Mashiach ben Yosef, who is Yeshua. And every single last aspect about it, including every word that he said, and especially these very important last words that he said um, whilst upon the cross. So also we've got this word, Shomamu. And I did a whole, a, from a long time ago, if you were to type in Arizal on my um, videos, go through the entire Arizal commentary, Ve'at um, Hanan, that really lets us know um, that Yeshua is the Mashiach. And he's using this word, Shomamu, desolation and astonished, as in Isaiah 52.14. Okay, it comes to 386, which is Yeshua, the regular of Yeshua. 53 is the ordinal of Yeshua. Okay, so you can see that that is very powerfully connect connected to revelation of Yeshua. Very powerfully connected. It's exactly the same gematria as Yeshua. Okay, but Arizal is using this word, Shomamu, to describe Moshe as being desolate before he is revealed as Moshiach. Okay, and basically what he's saying is that, um, uh, you know, um, he's, he's in this state, he's in this state of desolation which hides the truth regarding Moshe until he's fully revealed as a Mashiach. It's all coded message to say that he's, Yeshua is Mashiach. Yeshua is Moshe at the level of Mashiach. Okay, so we've got here... Um, the 1,358 is 1,000, the concept of Mashiach plus 358, which is actually the regular of Mashiach, comes to 358. And like I've put there, Yeshua is 386 regular plus 53 ordinary, exactly the same as this. And like I say, this was the exact word used by Arizal in his commentary to describe Moshe in his state of desolation. Okay, and we've got Gachon which is the belly, which we talked about in the lesson. This is the belly of the serpent in which Moshe is buried in. It's all coded messages for saying that if you want to reveal the burial site of Moshe, you've got to look towards the, the burial site. And you've got, really, if you want to reveal the perfection of the concept of the Mashiach, you've got to look at it in terms of numbers because the Gachon is related to the Gichon River and the Gichon River is related to the Remez level of interpreting the Torah and the Remez is very much associated with Gematria. Okay, so this is where Moshe is buried. What does that mean? You need to, his perfection is buried um, in the Gematria. And here we've got 1039, so two times that is 2078, so it's again it's hidden. Moshe's 
the, the perfection of Moshe is hidden where? In the belly of the serpent. And we can see that Aleph um, is very much connected to the concept of the serpent because here we can see it's to do with um, Yod Hei while we hide in himself. Um, this is a contradiction in itself, by the way, because he fills all things and he surrounds all things. So the fact he's hidden in itself is a contradiction. It's a, it's a, it's a phenomena that he's able to hide. He hides himself with himself. So um, this is a filling out of the word Torah. Okay, and I've pointed out before, 101, you saw on the Matrix video, room 101, it was Neo's room. And um, it really means to advocate for humanity. It's Michael, the guardian angel of Israel, and also of the nations, but he's also an advocate. He advocates for the good humanity has done. 1039, exactly the same. That's just filling out of Torah. Tav, Vav, Resh, He, Torah. Filled out as it sounds. And then, and the fate of all men will be visited upon them. This is the concept of the anti Moshiach, isn't it? Korach. He rebelled against the concept of Moshiach, Moshe. The ground ended up swallowing him. I've done teachings about that. It was actually um, the uh, the mouth of the earth that swallowed him up. As In the Mi Mishnah, it's got exactly the same gematria as Yeshua. Okay. And then we've got this. This is the ordinal of these five words up here that represent the hiddenness. How yod Wawe hides himself even in evil comes to 170 ordinal which is 10 times 17 and 17 is tov good the hiding is for an ultimate good to reveal the truth about Moshiach and then again we've got this concept of the letter ayin that's erased from Yeshua's name 130 plus 40 is 170 okay and we've got this the prayers of David son of Jesse are completed um, that comes to 1,358, exactly up here. So we know, um, and this is a highly messianic psalm. Okay, it's, it's connected. It's connected. And plus, we've also got David ben Yishai, which has got the regular gematria of 386, which is exactly the same as Yeshua. So we've got that. Now, this is a very big concept, Leviathan. Um, Leviathan. You crush the heads of Leviathan, and this is an aspect of the serpent. Okay, this is an aspect of the serpent that hides the truth. Audio Sifchai, and it hides the truth. Enod Milvador. There's only Yod Hey Wow, we nothing else beside him. Okay, so you crushed the heads of Leviathan. You gave it as food to the people in companies. It's all coded messages. 441, by the way, is truth and meth. So we've got to take the concealment to reveal the truth. We've got to take that aspect of the Aleph, like the two-way mirror. Um, you know, imagine yourself on a prison in a prison prison cell, and you know, with a with a two-way mirror, and on the outside you've got the observer. And um, but you inside, all you can see is a reflection of yourself in the mirror. In it just depends which way you're looking at it. So the Aleph is sometimes a little bit like that. That's it, it, that's the way that I understand it. The Aleph, you can either see yourself in it because you're so constrained by your own sense of ego. So when you're looking. Um, from the perspective of ego, you're going to see yourself looking back at you from that mirror, from that letter Aleph. It's going to re reflect, however, your current um, status. It's going to reflect who you are. And if your body is dominating over your soul, then it will that will stop you from seeing beyond yourself. But it can work the other way as well. Because um, when you're looking from the perspective of the name yod Hey wowee you can see everything. So it's got that double... You, you're like not sat in the prison cell. You're the one that's observing then everything that's going on. So you're sat behind that. You're, it's like a looking glass to you. It's not a mirror. It's just you're looking through it. And that to me is a lot, a lot like the letter Aleph. It can either look 
like um, you're looking at yourself and ultimately when we are seeing ourselves we're really seeing all the unrefined aspect of our ego that's what i mean in it so you stare what's staring you back in the face is your own enemy which is really a reflection of your unrefined self so that's what the letter aleph is like and that's why i use the two-way mirror because you can either see everything you can either see the oneness and perfection of the name Yodhe Wawe, or you see yourself, and you're looking at exactly the same thing. You're looking at the letter Aleph. Do I see a Lufo Shallow Lamb, or do I see my own enemy staring back at me? You know, because the enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will share the beauty. We, what do we see? It's all a matter of refinement. It's all a matter of humbling ourselves to imitate Yodhe Wawe. Okay? It's all wonderful stuff, and it's there's a truth is the absolute key um, to unlocking the difference. It's, it's truth is, is 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 key to switching perspectives between self ego centered perspective and seeing your enemy in the world around you, because <laughs> the entire world is like a big letter Aleph. So all you're seeing is every everything about this experience in this world is you're basically confronted by all your inner demons, all your inner en enemies, all your unrefined self. You look at it from the perspective of the name Yodhe Wawa and you just see nothing but unity and nothing but good. You know, you've got this revealed, the hidden good revealed, the hidden master of the universe is revealed. And it's, and it's simply a matter of perspective. Okay, so now we've had a look at that. Oh, let's just go back. I think I've... Um... Right, so we've gone through this. We've gone through that. Let's just have a look at this number. Right, we, we can see then that this number 747 is very important. We've got to do a deep dive into it because it's so significant when you've got all these concepts pointing to it. We need to have a look, well, what else can we find out from this? And quite a lot. Throughout my di different teachings and analysis, I've come over this number a lot. Now we need to put it all together. We need to put all the jigsaw parts of the puzzle together to build up a picture. What exactly are we supposed to be seeing in this world? Let's go and have a look. Okay, so we'll have a look. We'll have a, just a brief look at this um, letter Aleph. Um, like I said, it's like a two-way mirror. I hope I've made myself clear when I've explained that. So Aleph is also the first letter of the Hebrew word Ameth. So truth. We need the truth to be revealed. Okay, Yodhe Wawe, the seal of Yodhe Wawe is truth. Aleph also begins the three words that make up God's mystical name in Exodus. I am who I am in Hebrew. Ayer, Asher, Ayer. Ayer, Asher, Ayer. There we go. Aleph, Aleph, Aleph. Aleph induced mysticism represents the oneness of God. The letter can be seen as being composed of an upper yod. So this is the letter yod. And a lower yod. An upside down yod. So upper wisdom, lower wisdom. Okay, the three parts of the serpent, the head, the body and the tail, or the three parts of Mashiach, the right wing, the body, the left wing. Okay, whichever way you look at it, we, we, what, 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 whether this is a, a two-way mirror, you're looking at yourself and seeing a serpent, or you're looking through it and through Mashiach and seeing your te wow here. Okay. The upper yod represents the hidden and ineffable aspects of God, while the lower yod represents God's revelation and presence in the world. The vav is the hook that connects the two realms together. So this is the this is the connection between the hidden and the revealed as well. And what you might call in science the it would be the hook between um, you know like quantum physics and classical physics. <laughs> You know, this super hidden world and then the classical revealed world. Okay, so the letter Vav is the hook between the body of the bird or the body of the serpent, which which is represented by Yeshua. Um, the body of the bird is, is represented by Moshiach, but, uh, sorry, Moshe, but it's all different things. 
looking at three aspects, just as there's three aspects of that letter Yud, uh, sorry, the letter Aleph, the upper wisdom, the lower wisdom, the Vav in between, and all that that means, and as we've connected that back to that whole concept of contradiction and all that number 747. So three testimonies, three books, three main aspects to Mashiach, Tifereth, Yesod and Malkuth. So these are the three as three parts of what's called the Tree of Life. Okay, We've got the Ark of the Covenant, and in the Ark of the Covenant there's three testimonies, three books. We've got the stone tablets, we've got the Jar of Manna, and we've got the Rod of Aaron. The Jar of Manna, by the way, is never placed within the Ark of the Covenant. It's placed outside the Ark of the Covenant. There's the, just the Lukoth, and there's a very significant reason why. Because the Manna, it represents the bread, the bread of life, represents Yeshua. The concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, we know, was placed outside the camp. So there's all kinds of references there. Okay, so we've got the three books, three testimonies, three main aspects to Mashiach. So we've got, let's go and have a look at this concept again of the three books, bearing in mind it's some relationship to that letter Aleph, as we can see, and some relationship to the serpent, that's split into three parts, some relationship to the Mashiach, which is split into three parts. So this is taken from the book um, Sefi Yetzira, one of the oldest Kabbalistic books, um, known three books the sephiroth are the way that god communicates to us so these are the ten sephiroth on the tree of life from keta to malkuth from the crown to the kingdom okay um, and these three books are basically one is what they're called sefer you're really analyzing the word sephiroth here the ten sephiroth on the tree of life so in the book Sefer Yetzirah, they're analysing the source of the name Sephira, the so source of the word Sphiroth, because the no Sphiroth is the way that God communicates to us. Okay, so what exactly, in what ways is he communicating to us? So there's three ways of interpreting this word Sephiroth, and they are likened to three different books. So I hope you can see how it's then related to the Aleph, the three aspects of the Aleph, three aspects of the serpent and three aspects of the Moshiach. There's all kinds of different versions of three. Difereth, Yesod, Malkuth. And it goes on and on and on. Head, body, tail. All kinds of different things. It's all connected to a five-dimensional matrix, if you like. So text is Sefer. That's the first interpretation of the word Sphiroth, Sefer. And this is related to world and space. It's the form of the letters. And that's re that represents Moshe, who is the head. Okay. And then Sephiroth is also related to the word Safar, which is number. And that's related to and that, that's related to the three dimensions of space. Uh, you, so you've got um, you know, north, east, south, west, up and down. Okay, Safar so is related to the concept of year, which is time. So that's like Einstein says, time's a fourth dimension. So that's, so that's to do with the numerical value of the letters. That's connected to the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, which is the manna. This is the stone tablets. This is the manna. This is the body. Okay, and then it's also connected to the word Sipor. Sephiroth is connected to the word sipor which is communication or telling and this is connected to the realm called spirit which is the fifth dimension okay pure spirit that that fills everything and surrounds everything that that we know as yod here wow here okay pure spirit pure god and this is to do with the pronunciation and name of the letters. And this is related to the concept of Mashiach ben David. And that's related to Aaron's rod. And that's related to the tail. Okay. In, and that, that would be, um, uh, you know, um, in the Vav, for example, that would be the upper Yod. That would be the Vav. And then that would be the lower Yod. Okay. 
The definition of the word sphera, a Hebrew designation of the divine emanations that form the basis of creation. So the word for book, sefer, has the same root as the word sphera, except that the former is masculine, the latter feminine. Okay, sphera is feminine. The three books are said to be text, number and communication. The Hebrew word for test, texts, that should be, sorry. The Hebrew word for text here is sefer, which literally means book. Number is sefer, from which the English word cipher is derived. Everything is, a co is, there's, everything is coded to a certain degree. Everything is coded. It's a cipher for something. So everything's got... It, Hidden codes embedded within it. We've got to try and uh, we've got to try and um, fathom out those hidden codes as best as we can. And communication is sipo, which more literally is telling. Okay, so these are three books, and I've already told you what they symbolise. That's Moshe and the tablets, stone tablets. Mashiach ben Yosef and the jar of manna. Mashiach ben David and the Aaron's rod. Okay, they represent quality, quantity and communication, letters, number and the manner in which they are used. They correspond to three divisions, universe, soul and year and soul. Um, Baal Shem Tov had quite a lot to say about this. In modern times, these would be called space, time and spirit. As we shall see, the Sefer Yetzirah speaks of five dimensional continuum defined by the ten spheroth, the first three are the dimensions of space, the fourth dimension is time, and the fifth dimension is the spiritual dimension. In the next lesson I'll be talking about this because you can use this concept of um, collapsing the ways function and entropy and things like, um, you can even try and understand it when you go on to like, if you YouTube collapse of the wave um, function, there's a wonderful video that shows you how you can uh, understand all these concepts through a Sudoku puzzle. Okay, so if you imagine that you've got some kind of 5D Sudoku puzzle that you've got to somehow con collapse um, and reduce the entropy, which is like the measure of chaos, if you like, um, within a system. You've got to reduce that down by solving as many of the squares as possible in the Sudoku. But imagine it's not just 2D, it's a 5D. And you've got to... The, the truth that collapses the wave function, that reduces the level of entropy in the system to reveal that oneness has got to be consistent in all three five of these dimensions so basically what is written on the stone tablets of Moshe has got to align with the Torah of Mashiach ben Dawid and it's also got to be consistent with what you would call the, the Torah of Mashiach ben uh, David which is the revelation that there's only Yote Wawe, nothing else beside him. So that's the most elevated revelation in a way, but we don't get there without the truth as revealed in um, the Torah of Moshe and the Torah of Mashiach ben Yosef that must be united together. Okay, so the truth in order to in order to reveal the unity, you've got to unite these together. The, these together, all five dimensions, you've got to be able to unite and reveal the truth that is consistent it's consistent in all those dimensions, i.e. it's got to be written in the stone tablets, it's got to be revealed through the um, Torah of Mashiach ben Yosef and also in the actual time period of the 6,000 years of rectification, it's got to reveal, aligned to what's written in the Torah of Moshe, it's got to have actually occurred within time itself, um, our whole experience of humanity and, and uh, what humanity has experienced in time, and how that also connects to a revelation connects to the Torah of Mashiach ben Yosef and the whole concept of Mashiach ben Yosef which is um, it's, it's just a phenomenal concept you know of us suffering in exile in order to be perfected so that we are able to receive a revelation of that oneness 
okay and it's getting to the let and it's also got to be consistent with the um with, with the, the the fifth dimension pure spirituality the the revelation that there's only yod here while we're nothing else beside him so in order to collapse that wave function that's that wave function that would um indicate duality we have to have truth is consistent in all five dimensions and that's like a five-dimensional Sudoku puzzle that we've got to solve just... When we get one square right, it's not just a line going across and a line going up and, and the little box that it's contained within. It's got to be within the five... Literally five dimensions. So when you're collapsing the entropy, the uncertainty, the chaos, what number is that in that particular box in a five-dimensional... Um, a Sudoku puzzle to reveal that oneness it's got to be the truth <laughs> you've got to be connected to the truth and you, so you've really you've got to get it right in order to in order to reveal unity truth is involved in that you've got to get true results um, in the right or in the right order put all the jigsaw puzzles together in the right order Okay, and based on um, like what I've said, um, we're in a very advanced position right now because we're right at the end of the time frame, so um, we can see a lot of those spaces have been filled in, and we we're at a stage now where so many of those boxes have been filled in, and so much of the entropy has been reduced down, and so many of um, uh, you know, the obscurity has been collapsed for us. And we've got so many jigsaw puzzles already put together that it's absolutely inevitable. It's, it's like reaching that stage on the Sudoku puzzle when it's just a case of... Um, you, you, we've got beyond that stage where... Um, how do I put it? It's inevitable... <laughs> <laughs> it's inevitable that we're going to collapse it and reveal that oneness. We've got to the stage where it's completely, totally inevitable. It's like we're now riding on a wave, you know, and we've all the, oh, we've we've gone past all the really nasty waves, you know, anything that could have collapsed us, and we're just literally we on our, um, we we right at the end. We, we, we're right at the end, just on the easy bit now. All the hard work has already been done. It's taken us a long time to get to the stage where we are now, but it's all just about putting the last pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together. So it sounds complicated um, when I'm putting it like this, you know, to, to, to reveal that hidden unity, that hidden oneness, but it's all been done for us in a way. We're right at the end of that time process, that 6,000 years. So we're really at that time where every, every, all the hard work's been done. It's just a case of filling in what blanks are left, but we've got so much work and toil that's gone before us by the giants of Torah that, whose shoulders we stand on. And all that has happened in these last 2,000 years, this... Um, that's happened since the crucifixion of Yeshua, and we've got that tr that that history revealed to us. So now we can we can we can align that what's called time with what's written in the Torah of Moshe, and then we can um, start to see through that unity um, the whole concept of Mashiach ben David revealed. So basically we're right at the end. We're filling in a very well filled in 5D Sudoku puzzle. We just really, all the hard work has been done. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. We just have to be clever enough to fill in them last blanks and uh, keep going with all that's gone before us and, and, and draw on all that, uh, all that expertise and all that, um, you know all that hard work of humanity's done to bring us to this place of perfection. Just we're just filling in the last few blanks. We we're, we're really on the home straight now, and we've got we've got to be able to see that. So as much as as technical as what is might be presented to you on like this um, uh, PowerPoint and all the different complicated 
concepts that we need to weave together we should be thankful that we have got these to be able to weave together you know these are the works of the Torah giants that have gone before us that have done all this and left us a trace of all the uh, have, have left us a trace of everything who've been diligent enough to write down all the findings from within the Torah and and leave us with this as an inheritance yeah we've inherited some lies that we've got to deal with there's no doubt about that presents us with a problem and I talk about that all the time but also hidden in all the exile is these great hidden truths that we just need to pull together now for the um, final revelation <laughs> it's so exciting we are living in such exciting times so let's go and have a look at this unholy serpent bearing in mind that number 747 so Negara, evil plague, initial letters of the five types of every Rav. So basically there's five types of every Rav. Again, we're going through these three different aspects. It comes up again and again. Okay, so we've got the head, the body and the tail. Moshe, Yeshua, David. Tifereth, Yesod, Malkuth. Okay, the six days of creation. The seventh day of creation, Shabbat. And then the eighth day, which is the world to come, the fifth dimension of pure spirit. And you've got three aspects of the, the serpent. Okay, so this is the um, this is a concept of the serpent. I'm, when I'm talking about Metatron, Metatron and Leviathan, I'm talking about the giant serpent. Okay, so this is the one that bites us whilst we're in exile. This is the giant serpent, like the matrix is really connected to that letter Aleph that creates the um, separation between the hidden and the revealed. Okay. Negara, evil plague, initial letters of the five types of Erev Rav. So the five types of Erev Rav are Nephilim, that's the head. Then there's the body. This is like a serpent within a serpent. I can't show you the gematria to pull that up, but there is... Um, not today anyway but when you're analyzing and um, the truth shall set you free it comes up there so the head the, the, there's five aspects of the era of rav that's represented the head the nephilim the giant oh sorry they're giants but it means the fallen ones but then there's the three inner parts of the serpent the gibberim the anachim and the rephaim they're the part of the body but they also make up a serpent in themselves, don't they? The head of the body and the tail, that's a serpent within a serpent. And then you've got the Amalekim, which is the tail. These are your Amalekites, these are your Nazis. Okay. And then you've got the three concepts of um, Metatron, Metatron and Leviathan, which is the huge serpent. These are the little serpent compared to this. Um, massive serpent metatron metatron and leviathan so there's one serpent um probably um don't really i'm not going to even try and uh, cause us to understand that but these are the forces that really fuel our egos you know they they're biting us to, with lies to fuel our egos and to puff up our egos so that we're not able to see beyond that letter Aleph. We just see ourselves in it and we see all our enemies. We think we're seeing enemies, but we're just seeing unrefined aspects of ourselves. So these are these, these, this is the serpent that bites us. But then there's a bigger serpent. And this is really the way that that that's pure spirit is able to cross over into um into physical reality so it's like in physics it would be the link between quantum physics and classical physics they don't know this they obviously are aware that there's something that connects quantum physics to physical classical physics but they haven't found out what that is that would be symbolized by the letter vav but it's, there's a there's in 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 mystical terms that would be a serpent what would be called the great serpent and it would appear that it's got three aspects to it just like the letter aleph it's got the what's called metatron that's represented by moshe 
It's got Metatron, which is the seventh day, the Shabbat, represented by Yeshua. And then it's got this concept of the world to come pure spirituality, which is represented by King David and um, Leviathan. Leviathan has got the exact same grammatria as got Malkuth. Okay, and from all the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle, Metatron is the rod, for example, in Yeshua, in Moshe's hand that turns from a rod into a serpent. So there's that connection between um, Metatron and the serpent. Is also is also the connection between duality because he represents the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, he also represents the ladder between heaven and earth. There's all kinds of dual aspects to it, but in terms of a big serpent, we're talking about how yod he wow he manifests his pure spirit in physical reality, how he hides within himself, how he hides himself with himself. It's a concept that is called the big serpent. Okay? And when it comes to our true self being hidden from our self, it's a little serpent. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. That's the best way I can put it. How our true hidden self, our upper self is hidden from us in this physical reality is almost like a serpent too. Because we should be more conscious of who we are we are made in the image of yod he wow he that that's hidden. So when we're looking in a mirror and seeing, you know, like I've said, you, you, you've got the two-way mirror, but we're seeing our outer enemies, we're seeing ourselves unrefined, reflected out in the real world. We're seeing the little serpent looking back at us. We shouldn't see that. We should see the name yod he wow he because that is a tr tr our true self. We should see that awesomeness. We should, should see that perfection. We should see that good even in ourselves. So something conceals us from ourselves. And it's the serpent. There's a, there's a code name called the serpent somehow is involved with that. And it's somehow again related to the letter Aleph. And how the how the big self, the ultimate self, the ultimate existence, short hair, wow hair, hides himself from himself, is a big serpent, <laughs> a big letter Aleph, Aleph Gadol. You know there is a there is and um, the Aleph Gadol is related to the concept of Moshiach. Okay, that's the best way that I with all the puzzles of the all the jigsaw puzzles that I've been able to pull together. And if you go read, look at some of my um, lessons, you'll know that I go over these concepts again and again and again. It's just getting them in the right order to understand how do these major concepts all tie up. How, the, you you go to read about Metatron, for example just to find out about what actually Metatron is, is a lifetime. But thankfully, like I say, we're standing on the we're standing on the shoulders of sages. They've left a trail for us. It's here, there and everywhere. And then somebody else has come up and refined it further and and drawn more of um the concept of this together. And then somebody else has come along and drawn it together even further. So now we even we have a chance to go and these major, major, major concepts like Metatron, like the big serpent, like the letter Aleph, like the whole uh, concept of hidden and revealed, um, we can start to pull it together because um, it's, already been, it's already been ordered for us in a certain way. So as this world is a little bit like snakes and ladders, however... <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bit like ascent and descent. This is the wave function that needs collapsing, isn't it? Look at that. Is not that not a wave function? Ascent, descent, ascent, descent. So it's like we're riding on the back of this snake. This snake is the big snake, um, and we are like uh, we've got like little snakes that we're also looking at. 
Um, but then you've got this concept up here. This is actually a ladder snake. <laughs> so to complicate matters, it's a little bit like the letter Aleph. It both reveals and conceals. It just depends which way you're looking at it. So is it a ladder or a snake? Okay. It's that kind of phenomena. It sometimes it appears one way but also another. It's like... Um, part of that um, like Metatron going back to the analogy of the rod the rod the, the rod of Moshe that turns into the snake that when it's a snake Moshe runs from it okay so there's um, there's a connection there the world appears like snakes and ladders so some things cause us an ascent as to ascend some things cause us to descend it's usually the truth causes ascent and falsehood descent and now we're going back to these numbers here, 747. We can see how it's related to 474. Four, what's 474? The Ath, knowledge. That's the aspect of Adam that fell when he ate from the tree of knowledge. And that is what we need to rectify. Okay, and somehow this number here is involved. You can see it's connected. 474, 747. There is a connection. And it, and, it, and it's um, it's a little bit like this concept of the ladder snake because in one way um, the serpent is Mashiach just as Yeshua said just as the serpent must be lifted up so too the son of man must be lifted up okay so there is a connection between the Mashiach and the serpent and like I've said the book got the exact same Gematria 358 it's all it's all stuff we've got to really put together so this is the we're looking at that going back to that number 747 and seeing how this relates to this serpent called um, the unholy serpent the five aspects of the era of Rav that that bites us um, and fills us full of arrogance and pride basically it's lies that puff us up um, lies that come from exilic mindsets we need Hebrew mindsets that are synonymous with the truth so you've got the five types of Erev Rav the initial letters spell Negara, evil plague like coronavirus okay it comes to 393 which is exactly the same as the regular and ordinary of Shiloh Shiloh is the name of Mashiach Okay, so these are the five types Nephilim, Gibberim, Anakim, Rephim, Amalekim. Um, they come to a full ordinal, so if we add all the ordinals up for those five of 346, which is exactly the same as Od Yosef Chai, Joseph is still alive. Okay, so they are opposite this truth. We, in order to overcome this serpent, we have got to be in possession of this truth and everything that that means, Od Yosef Chai, connected to the entire revelation of the concept of Mashiach Ben Yosef. Okay, and this has got to be, um, this is what helps us de to defeat this unholy serpent. And then we've got the Mispag doll of the unholy serpent because we're dealing with... Um, so feet letters okay so we've got Miss Pagadol ordinal so that's the full regular that's the full ordinal 401 which is exactly the same as Nachash serpent 358 which is exactly the same as Mashiach the ordinal of uh, the regular of Mashiach but it's got an ordinal of 43 which is exactly the same as Asaph body and it's our body that dominates in exile that causes us to be um, filled with fantasy fiction and imagination, false concepts of the Mashiach, what we call the false Mashiach, that is none other than a serpent that bites us very hard. Until we've got this truth revealed, we will have this there instead, the serpent. So if we take the 401... In the 346, that's the ordinal of Od Yosef Chai, and this, add them together, 747. So the 747, which we've seen, is Moshe the man of God. That word contradiction, to deny the truth by asserting the opposite, 
sometimes you've got to take the opposite and transform it into the truth the, you've got to transform the lie into the truth it's the same as Yeshuaam and Hanot Sri which we've already put and it's the same as Moshe Ben Amran 747 these are the powers all this understanding that what we showed about showed you about the Aleph the, the hidden in the Aleph is Alufo Shalolam the truth okay and how that defeats this serpent and then you've got this here um, what have we got here let's have a look um, okay so you've got the regular the full regular of the name of the Erev Rav spelt normally and then the Mispagadol of the Erev Rav all five types of the Erev Rav if you add them together those two numbers you come to um, 5,544, which is 2 times 2,772. Okay, you've got Yeshua filled with a Vav, when the Vav is filled like this. However, the Nun does not contain a Vav. Okay, for reasons why I've spoke of on many occasions, because he's one of the luminaries, the concept of Sheikh Ben Yosef, and the Vav represents the truth, and the truth about him is very much concealed, and it's for us to toil to reveal that truth. Okay? So, but we can see how he is wholly opposite the evil Erev Rav. He is the truth. He's Yosef. Okay? And also, um, this is 2 times 1,386. And 1,386 is Yeshua plus Mashiach ben Yosef plus Mashiach ben Dawid. So it's a concept of Mashiach ben David plus Mashiach ben Yosef plus Yeshua, 1,396. And then we've got this here. So if we add up the full regular and ordinal, the full regular and ordinal up here, we come to um, 6,291 which is 3 times 290, 2,097, 9 times 699. That's very important because it's connected to and the truth shall set you free. Okay? Which we will see that number. So bear that number in mind. It's connected to and the truth shall set you free. Free from what? Free from this serpent, the little serpent that bites you and fills you full of lies fills you full of delusion, fills you full of a concept of the false Mashiach. Even if you believe that Yeshua is Mashiach, there'll be, be falsehood that you believe as that you've inherited from um, Edomite, Greco-Roman mindset. You won't have an Hebraic understanding of Mashiach ben Yosef. And without that, you've got lies that bite, that cause division and duality and separation and death. Okay? So we need the truth. The truth about his Hebrew roots, that he is rooted in the Torah of Moshe, and only that. It's so got that doubt, we've got to link up the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, rooted in, fully in Torah. It can't be something that exists outside of Torah. Our understanding of Mashiach ben Yosef cannot exist separated from Torah. So we've got to collapse, the truth has got to be consistent in all five of those dimensions, in all three of those books at the same time you know um, and it's connected to the concept of the treat of life because it's Hachayim is 233 so that's connected to that and that's connected up to this it is ultimately when we collapse this little serpent um, and Yoshua the son of Nun a lad would not depart from the tent the tent is about the holy Shekhinah it's related to the spirit of truth it's related to the concept of Malkuth it's related to that last letter here that we're we wanting to see um, completely and totally um, rectified and elevated up. Okay. Um, how is this connected then? And it's connected through those, that there, very clearly, to Yish the whole concept of Yoshua, son of Nun. Okay. And that's how you should spell Nun. Like I say, um, it, the, we've we've taken the vav out of that and um, to show that 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 truth is diminished whilst we're in exile we don't get a full revelation of the truth 
okay I think there was something else that I wanted to say but um, it's just tying it all in together there's probably other things but just bear in mind this number here 600 699 it's connected to um, it's connected to and the truth shall set you free and what else did I want to say yeah this is the little serpent that fills us full of ego and stops us from seeing our true self within ourself it hides us from ourself because our true self is that we are made in the image of Yote Wawe, not in the image of a serpent. We, you know, these fill us with their own image, their own image of, of uh, uh, you know, ego and body and things like that and uh, lower natures. That's not our true nature. Our true nature is that we are capable of imitating the name Yote Wawe and all his attributes of mercy being kind being truthful being compassionate being long-suffering being forgiving of sins you know we are supposed to imitate his name we are not supposed to be crawling around like serpents full of bitterness and poison okay so it's all connected we're hidden from ourselves with this serpent that keeps biting us right so now we're going to have a look at this number 747 and now that's connected to david we've seen how it's connected to Moshe. We see now it's connected to Yeshua. Now we need to tie it into the fifth dimension. We need to see how this, all these concepts, got to relate together and be that 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 line of truth or that tr the truth has got to connect and be consistent through all those three books, through all those five dimensions that we're talking about. It's the truth has got to be con completely connected and consistent throughout all those five dimensions so we're looking at the last dimension now and it was after this this is a very significant verse and it was after this that david inquired of the lord saying shall i go up into one of those cities of yehuda and yod we said to him go up da so said david where shall i go up he said to hebron okay so where do we get this from there's some quite interesting gematria in and amongst all this but the miss Pagadol is 3852 which comes to 747 and an ordinal of 747 okay this is very significant because you've got this verb ale as to ascend and this is very much connected to Mashiach ben david uh, and as it, you've got the 15 sounds of ascent as well Shia Hamalot it's the same verb to ascend okay it's very important so we've got 747 but it's also 3 times 249 that number will probably come up as well so straight away we've got that connection between Moshe and Metatron which Metatron represents the six days of creation so Moses is the um, commandments that are the six represent the six days of work don't they Mashiach ben Yosef represents the Shabbat day of rest um, well his, his upper self is a Shabbat day of rest David actually manifests that seventh millennium okay um, let's, I've talked about this before I'm not going to go through that now but Moshe and Metatron these are the square ordinals of Moshe and Metatron so Metatron's um, square ordinal comes to 963 I should have just put Metatron on I've just pulled the number out so it's actually the square ordinal of Metatron that's connected in some way to this but Metatron is connected to Moshe how do we know that well the sages say that the phrase Metatron Sa Ha'alam which is one of his appellations Metatron Prince of the World as spells the initials of Moshe okay but like I say, Metatron is um, uh, it's, it's really difficult to to understand all the things that I'm s saying. He, he's got dual his dual aspect. He's got he's, he he can either help and be on the side of good, or he can be like Satan himself. There's, there's an aspect to him that is Satan himself. 
Okay, so it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There's an aspect that's good and there's an aspect that's evil. Just depends if you're doing what he what he tells you to do. But he's like the slave who rules. He's in, he's in charge until we grow up and stop acting like serpents. <laughs> when we start imitating the name Yote Wahwe, he's not in charge anymore. The king is in charge of us. Yote Wahwe himself. Okay, so it's until we grow up. Nine hundred and sixty three is related to that. And the entire way it was written, this is a very significant verse, but it also comes to 963. This is a really significant number as well, 144. It's related to the letter Vav. Um, so this is one of the Erev Rav. This is the Erev Rav Mispah Gadol and the Erev Rav Mispah Gadol Ordinal of Refaim, which means the weak ones. The ones... Um, I think that the yeah the weak ones that run away when you get tested. Okay, so that comes to uh, it's connected to that. He, David was the opposite of weak, weren't he? he faced Goliath. <laughs> he weren't running away from nobody because he was zealous for the name of Yote Wahwe, and he was zealous, and he knew that he he knew that he was um he's, he whatever he was doing it's for the sake of his name. Uh, whereas the weak ones run away at the minute that they're tested. Um, okay, so to tie you like the song of a harlot, it comes to a regular 1,323, which is 3 times 441. This is where Yodhe Wawe can be hid, hides himself with himself because this whole. Um, verse from Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 23 15. I've not actually written it down. It talks about the one king, and in Talmud, that one king is um, referred to as Mashiach, it's none other than Mashiach. So, hidden in this um, particular verse, there's, there's loads and loads and loads of hidden messianic codes. One of them being more significant is the um, rev uh, it's connected to revelation of the truth because 441 is a meth okay but it's also can I've covered the actual number up just let me just get rid of that so there we go we've got the regular plus the ordinary is 1494 which is 2 times 747 so again connected to all these and then we've got we've already gone through all these I'm just showing how they are connected and connected up to David. So I just pulled up the same one. And then we go look. And the truth shall set you free. We've got that number again, 249. And also the wings of a Jewish man. Okay, 498 is 2 times 400, 249. So we can see through 249. That's also connected to that. The, this is also the wings of a Jewish man. It's, when you analyse that verse, it's, it's showing you that Yeshua is the Mashiach. Okay. And then we've got this. So this is a filling out of Esau. That's Esau. That's Esau to the first filling. And that's Esau to the second filling. And Arizal said, anything to the second filling is um, the absolute essence of a thing. Um, not one drew cent sure. Esau... It could be, I've put Ace up to the second filling, so it might just be this here, um, the ordinals anyway, it's the ordinal uh, of, of Ace of. comes to 249. So we've got that concept of the body here that needs rectifying. Ace of represents our ego. Our ego needs subduing what with? With the truth. It's the, the truth shall set us free from dominion our, our, our inner ace of dominating over our soul or our body dominating over our mind it will set us free from that domination ace of also represents Roman dominion it, it represents the Edomite exile that we're in now where Rome is what who, who dominates it's, we're in Roman dominion we're in we, we, the whole mindset that dominates this world at the time is Greco-Roman Western mindset. It's it's the and the lies and the delusion and the arrogance and the pride and the all the negative character traits that come as a consequence of that need subduing. Okay, but they can't be subdued with more lies. 
then you will only be subdued. This force will only be subdued with the truth. What truth? Odiosifchai. Okay, and like I say, you need to understand that to the highest degree possible. It's the truth that shall set you free. And then we've got this. This is the final redemption, isn't it? And and the dove, the Yona, returned to him at eventide, and behold, it had plucked an olive leaf in its mouth. And even that word leaf um, here, where is it there, look? Ale Zayit. And it's exactly the same three letters for to go up, because it's on the most exalted part of the tree the leaf so you've got ayin lamed he ayin lamed he ayin lamed he and then you've got ayin lamed he ayin lamed he zayit olive leaf okay so this is all connected and it's got this number again and behold it had plucked an olive leaf in its mouth so knew noah knew that the water had abated from upon the earth we wanting um we wanting to see that um, level of redemption that was experienced in the days of Noah now. Uh, you know, so you can see this is another key number that's connected to that. Right, so we're going to have a look at this. The truth shall set you free. First of all, we've got this verse. This is the day that you're here while we're made. We shall exult and rejoice thereon. Okay, some significant numbers because 989 is the regular and ordinal of the word Bereshith in the beginning and we know the end is in wedge in the beginning. It's got a ge ordinal gematria of 233 which is Eitz Achayim, the regular of Eitz Achayim, Tree of Life. Plus, if you add those two together, it's 2 times 611 and 611 is Torah. So we've got a lot connected in this um, particular verse it's all a coded message for some very significant concept it's pro probably the three books right there <laughs> if I thought about it long enough it would probably indicate the three books the Torah of Moshe and um, the end that is wedged in the beginning that is um, you know um, Sheikh Ben Dawid and then Mashiach Ben Yosef representing the tree of life so anyway, back to this, the truth shall set you free. So we're looking at, the, it's this number here, the 233. Um, if we go up here, we've got the regular and the ordinal that come to 2,353, which is 13 times 181. That base, 181 basically shows you that Yeshua is the Mashiach. It's a number I've gone on through loads. Um, it's connected to um, Psalm 72, Wilifne Yireach, Im Shemesh Wilifne Yireach, um, with the sun and before the moon. I think it's in that order. Um, and it's the initial letters spell, rearranged to spell Yeshua, and the end letters are Mashiach, it's telling you that Yeshua is the Mashiach. And there's all kinds of other connections to that number. Anyway, the Miss Pagadol is 3246 plus. 249 but if we add those together it comes to these two together 3495 which is five times 699 we saw that the serpent was a multiple of 699 and i said we'll point that number out again we saw it was also connected yoshua uh, yoshua son of nun we saw that number connected to that but it's also 15 times 233 so it's also connected to the concept of the tree of life. And as we can see here, we've got the 249 times 3 is the 747, which we've already pointed that out. But wanted to connect you, this statement up to all these other major um, concepts related to the we related to the tree of life, because we could see that the serpent was related to this. It's what's it's hiding it. Whereas the serpent hides the tree of life the truth reveals the tree of life okay so that collapses the wave function of duality to reveal the singularity 
I think that would be the language that you use in science. You know, I'm not a science, I'm more, more based on maths, but um, from what I have understand, I'm using language that is science. <laughs> scientific uh, at least scientific language so tree of life um, we, and science and Torah have got to be completely and totally unified they've got to be completely and totally unified um, there's no scientific truth that is not rooted in Torah if it's, if it's not rooted in Torah it's definitely not the truth but all scientific truth has got to be rooted in Torah everything has got to be rooted in Torah all truth is got to be rooted in Torah. And really, Mashiach ben Yosef is very much connected to scientific knowledge. The Vilna Goen points this out. The seven sciences are very much connected to um, Mashiach ben Yosef. Um, Mashiach ben Yosef is very much connected to our experience in physical reality. He is suffering with us in physical reality. He's descended with us into physical reality. Okay, so he is very much connected to um, scientific revelation because that's very much connected to experience in the field of life. Um, so Tree of Life, 233, is connected to that. And you've got 313, which is the regular and ordinal of Tree of Life. Okay, all these numbers are totally and absolutely super significant and wonderful. It's connected to and Yosef made himself known to his brothers. So this concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, he was hidden from his brothers and then he revealed himself to his brothers. The truth that he was still alive was revealed. Or Yosef Chai, we saw how that was related to the little serpent, the Erev Rav, the serpent as the five aspects of the Erev Rav. Okay, and also here, look, Amuna. This is the ordinal and regular of Amuna. There's all kinds of wonderful things. Amuna means faith. The concept of the advocate of Yisrael. So, well, there was a particular famous rabbi that got this designation, but it's that whole concept of Michael again, isn't it? The 101, as in with the matrix, the room 101. 101 basically is the coded message to us to advocate for the good of humanity the hidden good you know these old ladies that sit knitting clothes and making clothes while kids who are poor in africa and you know little elderly old man that saves up every last penny of his pension and gives it to uh, you know homeless people and drug addicts this goes on in a very hidden way and you will never know you, you just shove them out of, of, out of the way in the supermarket and the, the, there's a lot of secret good that goes on in this world. Not everybody is taking put pictures and posting it on Facebook of every penny that you give away. Some people have been doing great good and it's hidden and you've got to, have, you've got to advocate for that. And, and even advocate for the stuff that is revealed. You've got, we've got to advocate for humanity. It's what gets us out of um, exile. Um, it's connected up to this 699 and the truth shall set you free I've been talking about this all, all in so many so many of my teachings the power of advocacy the power to advocate for the truth okay 1, 3, 9, 8, 2 times 699 so connected to that and the concept of the tree of life um, there's, a, there's a, a saying isn't there um, you know our tongue is like a tree of life so we can see that connection there it's in Proverbs um, 168 is David the square ordinal of David rectified the Mispah Gadol of this advocate of Israel is comes to 1790 and also 179 so this when you get these the regular and the ordinal being a multiple of one another it's, it's highly messianic highly highly messianic i've got lists of where this comes up um, and everything to do with it, it's highly messianic so that's just another thing that i need to point out multiples where the regular is a mul uh, the ordinal is a multiple or a factor of the regular um so we've got that in this instance but 1790 is five times 358 five times mashiach it's also five times serpent 
So it depends in what you've got to be an advocate to reveal the Mashiach. Basically, it stands for Michael 101. Uh, it's all wonderful stuff. And then we've already seen this connection, haven't we? Yoshua, the son of Nun, a lad would not depart from the tent. So that's, that tent is referring to the Holy Shekhinah, the Spirit of Truth, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Dove. It's all and the Malkuth, the kingdom. Miriam, Yoshua is representing Yeshua. It's that Yesod and He, um, or the Vav and the He. Um, we, we, it's all connected. It, it's really Tifereth, Yesod and Malkuth, and it's all connected. Um, and, and that's connected via the truth, which symbolises Tifereth. And these are they're all Kabbalistic terms, but as you can see, it's all connected to the tree of life. And then we've got the concept of Yona again, the dove coming up again and again and again and again. So you've got um, the ordinal added to the regular, comes to 1398. So that's the holy dove that carried the um, uh, olive leaf in the mouth that we saw was connected to Mashiach ben David. I was going to see it's connected to the advocate of Israel and the truth shall set you free. Yona, the prophet Yona helps to reveal, and the numbers for the Yona helps to reveal the truth about Mashiach and Yosef. Shall a woman forget her suckling child from having mercy on a child of her womb? 1,500. Uh, also, it's this number here. Um, it's the ordinal comes to 233. So, as we can see, it's Etz Chachayim, the tree of life. And then all these come to 233. The firstborn, Habachor, first fruit, Bechora, on the mountain of Hashem, Bahar Yarweh, or Yodhe Wawweh. Um, I am Yodhe Wawweh, your Elohim. Elohim, Eloech, and Nechi. Okay, I think that's how you say it. I haven't got the verb point, um, the vowel pointing, so it's hard for me to read. And then light of Hashem, or Yod Heh Okay, all come to 233. All very significant number, tree of life. The interpreter, this is the Hamelitz, the interpreter that was interpreting between Yosef and his brothers before he'd revealed himself, comes to 233. It's the tree of life, is the interpreter. And then you've got that, um, I talked about Arizal, with his commentary on Ve'at Hanan and uh, and he pleaded. This is about Moshe pleading not to have to descend into exile, but he did have to descend into exile. What does that mean? He had to be hidden by the letter Aleph. You know, the letter Aleph is connected to Moshe because in the first word of the book of Vayikra, there's a little Aleph and that's connected to Moshe. But it will always stay the little Aleph. It will become the Aleph Gadol. The big Aleph. We talked about that, didn't we? Uh, you know, we talked about um, yod heh wow -He hiding himself with himself. He, he hides himself in the letter Aleph, which represents himself. And the concept of the Mashiach, which is the little Aleph, is hidden in the big Aleph to a certain degree. So the co it, it's like, just as, Mosh, just as yod heh wow -He hides himself with himself, the Mashiach is hidden from himself with himself and also us to a certain degree. We hide ourselves from ourselves. You know, we hide our true self. Our, our ego self hides our true self or our physical self hides our spiritual self. The same to, so to Yote Wawe, so to the concept of Mashiach. So we've got to start to reveal that that's hidden. And it's breath it has gathered them. So this is a very, very famous, uh, very, very messianic text from um, Isaiah. Seek out the book of Yote Wauhe. Okay, I've talked about that a lot. 233, exactly the same, it's all connected. And we were disgusted with this rotten bread. So this is the complaint against what? Against the manna. What is the manna? The manna is one of the books. That is the Mashiach ben Yosef. His testimony that represents the entire experience within physical reality. The entire time um, that we've experienced physical reality. The whole history, if you like, of physical reality. 
within 3D space, which is represented by Moshe and the Torah, and all of it should align. But we're disgusted with this bread. And another way of looking at it, you know, you, you, um, this, this, is, this will come later in the teaching. I'm going to end it here, but they, they've got to follow this thread through. This is part of the Lashon Hara. Moshe, Miriam was stricken with leprosy because she spoke against Moshe. There were three aspects of the Lashon Hara. There was Miriam speaking a bit about Moshe. There was the people speaking about um, the bread from heaven, like in here, and we are disgusted with this rotten bread. This was the entire congregation of Israel that spoke. We, you've got to understand the congregation of Israel is another representation of the letter A. Hey, so Miriam represented the letter He, but the entire congregation of Israel also represents the Holy Shekhinah, the letter He. Okay, so they spoke against the bread. Miriam spoke against Moshe, the head of the, um, the you know, the head of the Holy Serpent. They, the people who again spoke against Miriam, that represents the final letter here, spoke that sorry, that spoke against the manna that represents the final letter here. The people represent the final letter here, spoke against Miriam. Okay, so, sorry, I'm getting this wrong now. It's uh, they spoke against the manna which represents Mashiach ben Yosef. So, again, you've got the he speaking against the vav, Yeshua represented the vav. You've got um, Miriam representing the hair, speaking against Moshe, who represented the Vav. And then you've got, um, um, you've got it slightly different with Mashiach ben Dawid. You had the leaders that in some way are like the, the leaders of the people that are somehow um, possibly related to the letter hair. What were they speaking against? They spoke against the land that represented the letter hair. The land represents the letter here, represents the kingdom. Aretz represents, um, the earth represents the kingdom on earth. The, the, this is all one concept, but different facets of uh, the same concept. You can see how it's it's really it creates a separation between the vav and the hair. And we've got to create unity between the vav and the hair. That's where the healing's got to come in. There is no unity whilst the letter He is in a fallen, diminished, exile state, without the inner meaning, the secret meaning of the Torah. We're going to be looking at that next lesson. So we need to know all this. So when they're complaining against this rotten bread, it's, it's really creating disunity between the Vav and the He, that, that Yeshua came to repair that damage. He came to repair that damage, to heal his own mother in a way um, we've got to ask has it actually been done well he's probably took that healing is probably going to take a full 2000 years and like I say we're right at the end of that now it's not happened in the way that we expected it's some kind of instant quick fix this healing that's taken place has taken a very very long time and involved a lot of people to bring like I say, it's all connected to the inner meaning of the Torah. We'll, we, we'll, we'll get to it in the next lesson. You really need to subscribe if you're interested in deep, deep, taking a deep dive into this and seeing how all these major concepts are all codes that help unlock and help set us free. <laughs> the, it's literal freedom. It's literal freedom from... Um, our own ego and it's freedom from that duality and it's 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 freedom to perceive per perfection and unity and sovereignty and oneness you know that's what we need freedom we need freedom from anything that's other than that okay so we've got the soul of life here um nishmat chayim it's, it comes to a regular and ordinal together 600 969 okay i can't bring it out together and then this has got um if we add up the both ordinals the 111 which is aleph by the way aleph spelt out comes to 111 
so it comes to 900 and and we've got that up there as well Aleph just to point that out as well um, 969 okay so we take the two ordinals the regular ordinal and Miss Pagdol ordinal they come to 233 all these that's the soul of life the 969 is uh, Moshe 446 and that is Ha'emeth the truth 446 is Ha'emeth the truth and Yeshua called himself the truth because he was Moshe, reincarnated, the soul of Mashiach, elevated up to the level of Mashiach ben, soul of Moshe, elevated up to the level of Mashiach ben Yosef, um, 969, so we're connected to that soul of life, and this is at the level of Yetzirah, where the Aleph is filled with a Vav, and, the, uh, sorry, the Vav is filled with an Aleph, and the He is filled with an Aleph, and then that's related to this very, very powerful um, Messianic uh, text, Verse and the wise shall shine with the brightness of the sky, and those who bring the multitudes to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Daniel twelve three. It comes to um, a Miss Pagadol of four thousand four hundred twenty seven, which is nineteen times two hundred thirty three. So nineteen times the tree of life. But it's also here this two thousand one hundred eighty seven is nine times three hundred and thirteen, and we've got three hundred and thirteen. Is the regular and ordinal of Hetz Achaim. So we've got that double connection to the concept of the tree of life here. And also, if we add this number and this number together, it comes to 7720, which is 20 times 386, 20 times Yeshua. And it's also 10 times who Taharath, it is leprosy. Okay, so there's a massive connection between leprosy and Lashon Hara, evil tongue. Miriam spoke evil against Moshe and she was stricken with leprosy. Okay, so the, um, it's, it's like um, the Mashiach Yeshua took that sickness upon himself and he's regarded by the sages as a leper. I've spoken about this in very recent uh um, teachings we need to do a deep dive into all these concepts now so what we're going to be deep diving into next this whole concept of leprosy the whole concept of healing the holy shekhinah which is represented by miriam the mother of yeshua and um all that i've spoken about and how that's connected to leprosy and how what's the remedy for healing that and what realistically has happened to um, uh, humanity since Yeshua stood before his mother and said, uh, Woman, behold thy son, and to his disciple, um, Behold thy mother. What has actually occurred and how can we tie the experience humanity has actually experienced with the revelation of Mashiach Ben Yosef and how that is actually connected back and rooted to what is really written in the Torah because if we don't make that connection between the reality that Mashiach Ben Yosef has presented us with and the reality that is written in the Torah of Moshe it's not the truth okay they have got to perfectly align so we have got to you know when I said about collapsing the wave function and we've got to eliminate the entropy the the um, got to eliminate the chaos from the system in order to reveal the singularity, the unity of the name Yod Hey Wow Hey. We need truth, okay? So we need to truly interpret reality in accordance with what's written in the Torah. A true interpretation of the Torah as the tree of life, not the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Looking through the lens of the name Yod Hey Wow Hey, not looking through the lens of our ego and just seeing our enemies um, staring back at us and the serpent continuing to bite us. So with that, I will say shalom. Please subscribe and remember that we've got some great lessons coming up.